Hi everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to be using this beautiful metal die that I purchased from Simon Says Stamp. It is so pretty, and when I saw it, I instantly was inspired to make a Thanksgiving or fall inspired shaker card. There are so many wonderful things you could do with this beautiful metal die. In fact, I really wanna do some inlay work with it as well, but check me out on Instagram. I may do that and post it over there because tonight I really want to focus on doing a really fun shaker. So I will definitely link all of the materials that I'm using to bring this card together down below in the description box. That way if you want to shop any of these supplies and recreate any of these looks, you can go ahead and do so down there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to start off with a perfectly trimmed A2 size panel, and that is going to be at four and a quarter by five and a half, and that is going to be the front of my card. I also have, and this is all 110 pound cardstock, this is going to be, again, my front panel of my card, but I also have some scrap pieces of 110 pound cardstock that I'm going to use because I'm going to do some additional cutting with this metal die. That way I can stack and layer and get some really fun dimension. But you're going to see me do all of that. So the first thing I want to do is I am going to, because this is going to be my front of my card in its entirety. I want to take my time to make sure that I line this up just so because as you can see this die is very big. It's so beautifully big and it's going to take up every bit of my A2 size panel and I think that looks really good. So I'm going to just place a couple pieces of tape. I want to make sure that doesn't shift and what I'll do is I will just send that through my Gemini Junior to get it all cut out. Okay so I'm going to put this on my plates and let's send this first part through okay this one is all done now I want to take this off gently because this first part I only want the surrounding edge if that makes sense and you'll see why as I further bring this card together but actually, you know what I'll do is I'm going to, oh, that's so pretty. It cuts so nicely. So I'm just going to let all of this come out being very gentle because I really just want this surrounding edge for my first part. So just like this, okay? And then I'm going to pop all of these pieces out really nicely and then I'm going to keep this as well because I am going to layer this three additional times for a total of four layers of this beautiful vine just to bring some really fun dimension so let me set this off to the side as well and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to repeat this process on my remaining pieces of cardstock and again everything is that 110 pound weight I just love it because it ends up building so quickly on itself because of its thickness. So I'm going to go ahead and just repeat, lather and repeat on my remaining three pieces of cardstock. Okay, so I went ahead and did all of my die cutting. So I have four layers of this beautiful vine. Isn't this so pretty? And I wanna make sure they're all facing the right direction just so this next part goes a little bit quicker and smooth for me. So because of the delicate nature of this, I think the best way to stack this is going to be using the spray adhesive. So that's what I'm going to do. Go ahead and use whatever you would like, but I'm just going to use an empty box here and I'm going to place them so that they are are pretty side down and I'm just going to use my spray adhesive and I'm going to spray off camera really quickly just so that it doesn't get on all of my nice machines and things like that but I'm going to spray this off camera and then I'm going to stack these up one by one okay and using my sticky tweezers I'm just going to bring this in hover it over and do my best to line that up but it is pretty forgiving I have found so I'm just gonna take my time and then kind of use my tweezers to kind kind of help me get it all aligned where it needs to go so just kind of pushing everything into place for this first layer 
and then I will repeat this a couple more times and layer each one on top of the next. Okay, so just squeezing some of these into place. That way they just layer beautifully. We should be all good to go. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna grab a piece of just scrap paper to put on this. That way when I place it pretty side down again, I don't get any ink residue on my really nice die cut. Okay, so I'm just gonna use this little piece of scrap piece and again, I'll spray off camera. Okay, and whoops. You can instantly tell, ooh, that is definitely, oh, was the right way. <laughs> I'm gonna say we could instantly tell that was not the right way. Oh my, look at that lineup. That was, that was lucky. That was pure luck. Okay, third time is the charm on that. Oh, and every time you add one more, it just gets better and better. And you could stop at three. You absolutely could. But why when you can do four? And that's, I'm really going for a real nice pop of dimension off of this card. Okay, that one did really good. Okay, I'm just going to flip this over. Bloop, and same thing. There we go. Okay. I feel like the more I practice with layering die cuts, the better I am getting. And I honestly, it wasn't the hardest thing for me in the beginning in the first place, but I feel like it's kind of getting to be a cinch. Okay, so, oh my goodness, look at how thick this is. Can you tell? Oh my gosh, you can. Okay, that is gorgeous. I love it. It's just beautiful. And I'm gonna make sure everything really does though. Everything looks really good. So I'm going to set this, oops, one little spot. I'm going to set this off to the side and I'm just going to place a nice acrylic block on it so that we can just make sure that that is in its place while we work on this portion of the card. Okay. I'm going to bring out a sheet of acetate. Bring that. Oh, perfect. Okay. Bring that out. I'm going to trim that down to be well, this is again, A2 size. I think I'll just trim it down to be slightly smaller. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in my little mini trimmer here and let's see, we're going to do four and a quarter, but let's do four and an eighth, just to make it slightly smaller. Oh goodness, that was three and an eighth. Okay, four and an eighth. I was gonna say that looked mighty small. Okay, four and an eighth by five and three eighths, just to make it an eighth of an inch smaller than our A2 size panel. And I think that is perfect. Now it's a little hard to see because it's beautifully clear, right? But let me put this right here. Let's go ahead and turn this over I'm going to grab just some liquid glue for this part. Just a nice, look, oop, got a little goopy on there. Okay, a nice liquid glue with a precision tip. And I'm just gonna go all the way around and I'm gonna get in all these little openings too, if you can see, right? So any place that there's a little opening area and I'm being careful, I don't want this to distort because I want it to maintain its nice shape because we're going to place our little vines right into it, if that makes sense. Okay, so we're putting the acetate on now because this is creating our window. Because beneath our window is where all of our beautiful shaker bits are going to go. Now, I should have done this as a live. I haven't done a live in such a long time. I really need to do that. Okay, I should have done this as a live, but here I am recording. Because I have two packs, well, sh I'll show you in a minute. I have two packs of beautiful contenders for the inside that I can't decide on. Okay, so I'm going to take my acetate and I'm just going to place that right over that glue. And because it is an eighth of an inch smaller than my A2 size, oh, perfect. It just goes really nice on there. Okay, so I'm just gonna press that down 
Oh, that looks really good. Again, just making sure I don't distort any of those edges, but that looks really nice. Okay, now I need to think about, so I need to build up the edges. And if you can see, we don't have a lot of room here because that die is just beautifully, beautifully big. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to find some thin foam tape so we can build up and create a gate because then we can pour our little bits in. Okay, so I have this foam tape and I think it's gonna work. So right as is, it's gonna look a little too big, right? But you have to remember that we're going to put this inside. So we're gonna have a little bit more room to play with. Oh, that's gonna be so pretty. Oh, I'm ruining it. Okay, I don't mean to ruin it. Okay, you stay over there. Okay, so I'm gonna be fine with that. So this I think is a quarter inch, yeah, quarter inch foam tape. And I am just going to go all the way around the perimeter of this card, being careful not to miss any openings because it's a gate, right? You don't want any of your little sequins to fall out. So you wanna make sure that you have everything really, really covered. Okay, so I'm going to trim. Oh, sorry, my heater's coming on. It is so chilly. I say that in every video, but it is that time of year. We, it, it's just, it's just chilly. So I have to keep toasty warm or I'm just gonna get, I'm gonna have to craft with mittens on if I don't, so. Okay, again, going all the way around. And I think I'm just gonna do this one high, if that makes sense. Sometimes I, I double it up and do another layer on top of it just so I have more room. But I think I'm gonna be good with just one. Okay, so now being careful to measure really well. And let's cover. Okay. Now, when I turn this over, you will see, do you see my little foam tape here? It's okay, because again, we're going to have some pieces in here. Now I need to decide, do I want to put a little bit of foam tape kind of around in here just to kind of keep it built up? Do you think it's gonna matter? I mean, it might, it doesn't hurt. And I don't think it's really gonna matter with the sequins. It's gonna be like that pinball game, right? Where the sequins kind of have to navigate around little obstacles. But you know, I don't think, I don't think it's gonna matter. And I'd rather have these little areas not bow than worry about that. So I'm just gonna put a few around. Skip this part if you think unnecessary. But sometimes when you spend this long on a card, you're not you're not wanting to worry about any little bits falling. Okay, I think I think that will just kind of beautifully give some stability. I think we're good there. Okay, so now what I will do, let me decide, do I want to do I want to add another layer? I think that's gonna be enough. Okay, while we're thinking, I think it's gonna be enough with the one because look how pretty. Okay, I have two and I'll link them both. That way if I decide to use one over the other that you wanted, then you can you can shop both of them. I picked both of these up. This one is called Pumpkin Spice. That was just beautifully appropriate for this season. And this is called Firefly. And I have to say, I think Firefly is just where it's at. Tonight we were driving around doing some errands and it was right before dinner. The sun was kind of starting to set and all of the trees were just taking on reds and oranges and yellows. In fact, I was asking the kids to vote on what color they were seeing the most in the trees around because I was seeing a lot of yellow, but there was a lot of orange and red too. So I'm kind of feeling like this is speaking to me just based on what I'm seeing outside my window. So I'm gonna use the Firefly, but pumpkin spice, I mean, it's everything nice. It is everything nice, that's so pretty. I'll link them both for you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to let me decide on what backdrop I want because once I place my sequins inside, 
I am going to want to close because I don't want it to get everywhere. So let's decide, do we want to do a color backdrop or do we want to do white? Okay, this should have been alive. I'm just talking to myself here. Okay, so let me put my pin back in my glue so that I am a responsible adhesive user. And I'm also going to pull some paper out. Now, this is what it would look like if I put it on white. But remember, we're going to get a lot of color with our sequins. Oh, okay. Uh, I am really simple in that white on white really does it for me. But I also want to look. I, I pulled this paper that I purchased from Joanne, oh, like forever ago, forever ago. But this is what it looks like in case you want to try to find it. It's beautiful neutrals, just stunning. But, oh, man, it's been in there a while. <laughs> Look how long it's been in there. Well, that's not the true color then, but I kind of like it. Look at this is the true color. But do you see the sun? <laughs> the sun faded it that much. But you know what? I'm kind of digging the faded version. Okay, hold on. What would it look like? Ooh, just richness, though. Oh, I don't like making decisions. Oh, both are just so pretty. Both are so pretty. Okay, A or B. Okay, I feel like I need to just kind of get the full effect. Okay, so it's gonna be really dimensional, really fun. Should I do that or should I do that? Oh my gosh, I'm going with the white. And I know, I kind of have it in my heart that everybody in the comments is gonna say, that beautiful brown, or was it, it's kind of a mocha color. But you know what, it, it it's gonna look beautiful either way. But I feel like I just want the sequins to just really steal the show. And I think it's gonna look cleaner um, with just the white. So, okay, let me know if you would have done the, the mocha or if you would have done the white. But, okay, we're, we're going with, with the white and we're going with this Firefly mix. I think it's just gonna be too much. Okay, so let's open, oh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. Now, how do I, I'm gonna cut off this. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna cut off as much as I can and just make it come out very easily here. Okay, let's take this little guy out. You can't go wrong. Oh, oh, here we go. Commence the mess. So I'm gonna use this whole pack. I mean, obviously, oh, look at that. So pretty. Okay, trying not to get it all over my foam tape, right? But I find it easier to take the adhesive. Uh, oh, okay, that was that was a lot. Um, well, you know, what am I gonna do with that much? With that much, it's just all gotta go. Okay. But I find it easier to do to take off those foam tape strips before adding in my sequins. Okay, so I'm just going to thoughtfully place these all around. Did I do too much? I mean. Okay, here's the thing. I'm liking how much sequins that I have in here, but I am feeling like, I need to move this out of the way. Okay, I'm feeling like I need to double up my adhesive. I'm thinking I need a higher wall. So I'm going to, there we go. Sometimes my Gemini steals focus. Um, so I am going to go ahead and very carefully and thoughtfully add another layer of adhesive and I think we'll be just fine. I just think we need a little bit more room for that sequence to go. So I'm going to be very careful. This is not the order you do this in at all, but it's the order that that you do it in when you realize you needed to in the first place. Okay, so let me take some of this out. Oops, sorry about my headband there sure I'm not covering too much up here. Okay, but I think doubling up is going to be 
the right choice. So I'm just going to really quickly do that and I'll see you in a second. Okay, so do as I say, not as I do, double up. Well, it kind of depends. If you do, if you want to do a lot of fill, double it up so that you it has room to move about and it doesn't get stuck, right? Because sometimes it can clump up if it's not given a lot of height and it kind of just gets stuck, right? Okay, before I do that, I think I'm going to take, now this is again going to cover here. I think the white was the right way to go. At least it is for my style. So Go ahead and do whatever fits your style the best. But what I think I'm gonna do is so that I can line this up really well, I'm going to do just about an eighth of an inch off each side once more, just so I have a little bit of wiggle room with lining this up. So I was doing four and an eighth by five and three eighths, just like my acetate. That worked beautifully well. And let's peel off the adhesive strips. Okay. I cannot wait to see how this turns out. This is a card I've been dreaming about ever since I saw this metal die on their website. I, I instantly knew what I would do with it. Sometimes you get craft supplies and you kind of hem and haw over what you want to do, but this I not only knew I wanted to do this exact shaker, minus deciding which which fill to do, of course, but I also really have a few more ideas of what I could do with this, just as I'm sure you watching are inspired in other ways. That's why I love, I love card making and card makers. I love seeing how everybody else is inspired. It's so neat. Okay, so now because this is just an eighth of an inch shorter or <laughs> smaller, shorter, smaller, I can just whoop, hold on, line this up really nice. Oh, Bethany. Okay, okay. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. This is gonna turn out. I promise. Okay. There we go. Perfect. That eighth of an inch. That's the trick. That is the trick. And yes, we have a little bit of, you know, adhesive on the sides here, but we're going to put it on a card base. So it doesn't even matter. No worries. Okay. So I feel like I've been demonstrating it. Oh, goodness gracious. That is so pretty. Okay. Definitely want the double adhesive because look how freely it moves. <gasps> New favorite card. New favorite card. Okay. Let's do this. Oh, that's so pretty. Okay. What I want to do now is I want to, I'm going to do the spray glue again. I just think liquid glue is going to take, it's going to be too tedious for me. And I already have the spray glue out. So why not? And I feel like, is this already, I'm just going to grab a new piece. Okay. Again, pretty side face down. Let's add a little bit more of the spray adhesive and place this right on top. Okay. You know what I just realized is I think I'm using my clean tweezers as glue tweezers, which I'm not gonna, or I'm going to regret soon and I'm going to need to clean these off. I try to keep tweezers for sticky stuff and tweezers for, you know, just regular every day, just so that one stays nice and clean. Oh, that was perfect. Okay. Just guiding those into those little openings. Oh, that looks so nice. I like already that I did those extra, um, pieces of foam tape throughout the inside, I can already feel that I have a lot of support there. It's not bowing. So nice. And I'm actually going to flip and I'm going to do this. That way I can really make sure that's glued down nice. Okay, look. Isn't that pretty? That is just 
way too pretty. I love it. And I love how freely it's shaking. Okay, so I feel like I've been doing this the whole time, but in my heart, the card is going to go this way. So now I need to, I'm going to put it on a card base and then we're going to worry about the sentiment. Well, we're not going to worry about it, but we're going to focus on creating it. Okay, so let's bring in the little score buddy. I have to think this through now because I always do it the other way. So I am going to score at four and a quarter. So I have my paper at, um, let's see, I have eight and a half by five and a half. Okay, so just a piece of cardstock cut in half. And then I'm going to score it at four and a quarter because that is half of my eight and a half. I always have to think it through when I do this orientation. Okay, and then I have my A2 size card measuring five and a half by four and a quarter. There we go. Pretty, pretty. And then I'm going to keep my score buddy out because I'm going to need to line this up perfectly onto my card base. So what I think I will do is I am going to use some strong tape runner. And when I need something strong, I use the sticky thumb tape runner. It is amazing. I love it and it's very strong. So I just, I over, over glue it or over tape it because why not? And it does such a good job. Okay, it's nice and strong for when you have a big panel like this. So I think what I'll do is I'm gonna place this right in here. And then if I place this in there and line this up, let's make sure everything's snug then theoretically everything will be lined up just so. Okay, I think, I think that's it. Okay. Yes, Ooh, that looks good. Okay, let me turn it this way and let's put this over here. So it is, you know, a thicker card, right? Because we have that double adhesive, but oh, that is so pretty. And I'm glad I put the whole fill in because we needed every bit of it. That was the perfect size for a shaker, for a full panel shaker like that. Oh, that is so pretty. Okay, let's do our sentiment. Okay, I really wanna keep this simple and I am going to put this cute little hugs die on there and I love that, but I'm going to cut it out of gold, a really nice gold metallic cardstock. I think that will be so pretty. So let me grab that and we will get it all cut out. I think I'll also stack it a little bit just to make sure it's strong enough because it's not going down on a flat surface, if you will, right? It's going to be on this area that is it has some raised dimension. So I wanna stack it just to make sure it is nice and strong. Okay, and I think this is from Spellbinders. It's just stunning. It came in one of my subscription box boxes last summer, and I think that's gonna be a really pretty color. Okay, so that's what I'll do. And I also grabbed some 110 pound cardstock that I had in a scrap piece. I'm just going to send this through once on the gold, two additional times on the white, and we'll be good to go to stack. Okay, so this just cuts out so beautifully on the Gemini. I am a million times impressed with that cutting machine. So I'm just gonna poke out all the little insides. Look how delicate this is. It's so pretty. So I will, I'm just gonna stick on the spray glue train because of the thinness of this die cut. It'll just be easiest. And I think what I'll do, oops, one more, come on. Okay, so they're gonna go bye-bye and we're going to stack, stack, and stack with gold on top. So I'm gonna take these two and let's see, is that correct? Hold on, let me think. I don't wanna do it wrong. So I need to take these two, yes, pretty side down, glue on the back, and we'll stack. Okay. 
very carefully. I've got my glue on there. Let's get this lined up really nicely. There we go. Tweezers are the MVP for stacking die cuts. Oh, there we go. That looks great. Okay. Make sure that that is nicey nice. Okay, that looks really good. And then I'll do my gold and stack that up. Okay. Pretty. Okay, I love that. I am going to just take a mini block. Kind of looks like my spray adhesive may have turned some of my um, gold a little bit silver. Oh, I don't have my autofocus on because I'm so close. Kind of seems up here that it turned it a little bit silver, but that's gonna be okay. Okay, so now I feel like that is so chunky and intentional. Now I just have to decide where I would like to put that. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. I usually don't top right justify anything. I'm usually quick to bottom right justify, but if the recipient wants to display this card, they're going to display it like this, right? And so all the shaker bits are going to fall down. So I thought, how pretty would it be to have the sentiment here? so that when it's on display, it really kind of pops out there. I thought that would be kind of fun. So I don't know, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to put some spray adhesive on the back of this and pop it on there. Okay, so I am just going to find a spot where I think, actually I'm gonna go over just a little bit more, where I think a lot of the letter will come into contact. Do you see how I did that? So that the G would come into contact here the H looks really good. Everything feels like it's snug. And I hope it's straight. I think it is. We're going to be good. Okay, there we go. Now, I will say that I think that spray adhesive is kind of um, interfering with the, the nice gold look. So maybe know that. I don't know. Note it. But not enough for me not to use it, I don't think. But isn't that pretty? I love how this looks. I think it's just nice and simple. And I really, really love just the flow of those beautiful sequins. I think they're so pretty. Okay, that is where I'm going to take this card. I'm going to stop there because I just love the dimension on that. I think it's so pretty. And I think just the simplicity of it is what is gorgeous about it, right? I just think that it's just time to be beautifully done with it. I hope you enjoyed this. Please be sure to give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching this card come together. And again, I may play around with this die even more. And if I do, I'll put it on Instagram. So my handle over there is the same as it is here, Bethadilly. So be sure to check me out over there. If I have some time, I'll play around with this a little bit more. If not, I promise to do lots of more fun cards coming up this season. So I love how this turned out. I hope you did too. The shine just really steals my heart. All right, I can't wait to see you in the next tutorial. Everyone have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon.